Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. So this is Steven. Um, so today I'm going to go over something that um, some of you guys have been requesting from me and is that I go do a code review of the Alchemix code base. Um, I know um, this is something uh, a couple of you guys have already mentioned that you wanted me to go over um, because I, I, I like to give you a little bit of context, I've done uh, some Solidity programming before and am a full stack developer. So hopefully this will be helpful to you guys. Um, and yeah, and make you, uh, help you guys as you consider uh, whether you guys are investing into Alchemax using its products or um, or just looking into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is Alchemax actually open sources all their code. So you can just search Alchemax GitHub and then you'll see their organization and all the code. Um, all the contracts that they use. Um, I We don't know if the contracts are up that they're running right now, uh, for example, on their site um, and the deployed smart contracts are exactly the same as the one they have here. Sometimes some teams update um, um, maybe on a private one and then kind of merge it into the public one or various ways. Um, and yeah, so, but I think uh, Alchemex is pretty updated. I see the Technocratic um, updated about seven days ago. Uh, Technocratic is the um, creator, the main developer of Alchemex. Um, so one thing to note is that um, you can just go into, they have a couple of items over here. The main things are in the contracts folder and the main contracts, there actually aren't too many, right? It's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight contracts in total and a bunch of um, code to help those contracts do its work. Um, let's go into the Alchemex token, which will probably be um, the easiest one to start off with. Alchemex token is, as you can see over here, is a typical ERC-20. Um, it's good that they're using a lot of stuff from Open Zeppelin. Um, just reusing code from there. Open Zeppelin is pretty verified, so it's safe on that end. Um, access control is also used, um, and that just helps um, maintain some of the security. Uh, gives them a bunch of functions right off the bat. And so what I see over here is um, right now the admin role and mentor role for the contracts is still um, sent to whoever deployed the contract. As you can see here, the message.sender is the person that deployed this contract. Um, so it's still all owned by the dev team, right? Um, it's not like a governance-based contract um, like you might see in Compound um, or SushiSwap where um, the community decides on things, right? So they can release more tokens or uh, remove tokens uh, um, anytime. Um, that does expose them to hacks. Um, if, uh, for example, there are um, some, uh, I forget the specific project um, this is from, but basically there was a founder of a project. He got an email, that email, uh, he opened it up and that email contained some malware that hooked into its Chrome extension um, the MetaMask one, it, um, and then uh, the next time he made a transaction using the MetaMask Chrome extension, automatically all the funds of um, all the tokens that he had for that project that was actually set aside for developer funds, uh, the tokens were sold off, right? So there, um, and this was another project, not Alchemex. Alchemex is still doing great. Um, it's a really popular project. Um, but I'm just saying like, um, depending on how they're storing their keys, hopefully they're using some um, better, good ways of storing that key, like using a multi, um, some multi-sig setups. And I believe they have something set in the contract to help them on that end, um, or using like a wallet like BitGo or something like that um, to make sure they have that multi-sig set up there. Um, is really helpful. So I don't know too much on how they're managing their keys, but because um, this contract is so heavily dependent on the keys, that is something you do have to keep in mind. Um, there is um, that uh, developer risk and team risk there. Um, so over here, 
Um, they have a multi-sig wallet set up, which is quite interesting. Um, so it basically needs multiple people to agree to transactions before execution. So let's see over here. So that was what I was mentioning earlier. So that does increase some of the safety of their code. Um, and that's good. Um, I'm glad they have this in there. Um, there are some projects that don't do this, right? So right here, they have a bunch of functions. Um, these are mostly like utility functions to so do most various things like add an owner, remove owner, um, stuff like that. Um, so let's see, I think over here, it is enabling, so over here it is enabling the owner, um, uh, the wallet, uh, the key, or the owner of uh, this, or they, they call them owners, right? But it's really just a Ethereum wallet um, to submit a transaction. And what's cool about this is that up here, you can see there's this function called change requirement. And this is where the multi-sig, um, the, where the multi-sig stuff comes into play. And this is um, basically requires a certain number of <clears throat> people to uh, confirm a submitted transaction over here. Um, before that transaction can um, go through and be executed as an over here, right? Um, so that's really cool that they have that. Um, I'm curious how many people they have for um, the requirement is, um, because of course the state isn't stored in GitHub, right? Um, it's on their deployed contract. So I would probably have to look into their deployed contract to really see that. I'm not sure if that's even possible because usually the deployed contract is just byte code at that point, but maybe there might be something out there. Um, that would require some deeper digging. So um, probably not something I'll do in this video. Um, would probably take some, uh, a bit more time to look into. Um, so that's a multi-sig wallet. I love that. Um, they have some good security there um, to prevent it's just like one developer on the team from like wiping out their funds or stuff like that. So that's good. Um, they have, they do have a consensus and that's what good dev teams do, right? Um, especially if they have um, key access to the uh, token contracts and stuff like that, multi-sig is really good. Um, and yeah, and then let's see some of their other stuff. So we went through their ERC-20, the Alchemix token. Um, Let's also check out their AlUSD token now. So I'm just gonna click into their AlUSD. And for the AlUSD one, it's also an ERC-20, as you can see over here. Um, so it basically gets all the ERC-20 um, functions and uh, from the open Zeppelin contract and has all the ERC-20. Um, they also, uh, added in some extra functions or um, items that they have specifically for the AlUSD token as well, uh, which is pretty interesting. Say, so um, if you remember from the Alchemix um, app, you you could see that there was this function called burn in their app. Basically, let me pull up my dashboard for Alchemex. And that that is that function that just showed up. Let me show you the UI first and then I'll dig, go, uh, show you what the code is. So in the, in the app, you can see that there's this function called liquidate. And this basically allows you to, um, so you can put in die like a thousand die, take out 500 AlUSD, right? Half of that. And then if you don't want to re ever repay the AlUSD, what you can do is just automatically liquidate it, um, liquidate your loan. So it'll just cut um, your loan by, uh, reduce your collateral by how much of your loan you have, um, and then just repay that back to you, right? So if uh, you have a thousand dollars, you borrow out 500, then you can call liquidate and get back your 500 die back 
And um, that sometimes helps because you that way you can kind of save on gas fees if you just need it back really quickly and you already use the LUSD. So you don't have to do all those transactions over, which is really pricey while gas is so high right now, right? So the burn is pretty cool, um, stuff like that. Um, you don't see that too often. And this is something specific to what Alchemex needs, right? And then, and then there are a few other functions over here. Uh, I think that's more specific to Alchemex. I'm actually not too sure what these ones do specifically. Um, they are primarily for the admins to control the AUSD uh, supply or things like that. So. Yeah, these ones, uh, maybe I might figure them out as I look at some of their other contracts. Um, it's probably for some of the functionalities here, but I am i don't know which of the functionalities there are, but they're primarily around centered around the admin ones. Um, so set, set ceiling. Oh, okay. So the set ceiling is sort of the like how the sort of collateralized amount or loan to value amount, I believe, um, if that is what it is here. Um, I'll have to check into it to make sure that is the case, but it could be like the 50% loan to value that is set on the contract. So some of the other ones like staking pools, let's see this one. Ah, this one is very cool as well. Um, so this uh, staking pool contract is the one that gives people the Alchemex rewards when um, <clears throat> when you stake, uh, when you provide liquidity for the Alchemex, like, you know, on SushiSwap with the Alchemex ETH pairs and stuff like that. Um, an example of that would be if you just go to Zapper.Fi and just go to the farm tab. And that's basically what um, most of these contracts are doing. So this one usually doesn't have too much security concerns. It's usually um, set up by a lot of projects out there um, that implement the staking um, and things like that. So this one seems, um, there are definitely more functions here because I think they re-implement a good amount of it. I believe they didn't import too much on this and instead, uh, we implemented a good portion of the functions. So you see some interesting ones are like the reward rate, like setting how much um, and controlling how much Alchemex can go out from staking, stuff like that. That's useful um, if they want to uh, de decrease that, things like that over time. Um, and yeah, and I think that's all controlled by, yeah, by the admins in this contract, right? So yeah, and a bunch of utility functions around that. So this one, I believe, is usually a little bit more standardized across across various projects that implement staking um, and things like that. So one of the, I believe, so there's a, maybe two more contracts left. Um, one thing that's interesting is your transmuter. I'll go into that. Um, so based on what I'm seeing here, the transmuter, it, let me just show you the UI one for that one. It um, seems like it's probably the transmute tab and the functionality is basically staking your LUSD to convert it to die over time. Um, so it's sort of like the, the loan where it earns yield on your die uh, when you deposit from your own finance and then um, slowly decreases your debt uh, from the interest, right? Um, that's sort of like that, but in reverse. So our USD, if you stake that, it um, can earn yield on that and then um, uh, pay that back to you, I believe. Or, yeah, or convert it back to DAI. So they're using these to earn yields, basically, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I think I, I probably won't go too much into the code here because... Um, I think for this one, I is not. It's not a feature I played around too much with yet. Um, I think I'll probably skip this, but um, it it's an additional feature, so it doesn't. It's not one of the ones that the other layers are based off of. So it. Um, 
I be, so I believe this won't impact too much on, in terms of security. Um, in this video, I just wanted, um, most of the people that requested this video from me mainly wanted to get look into the security and things like that. So um, I'll just skip the transmitter since it's probably not too related to that. And the final one is the Alchemix time token. So this one is kind of interesting. I actually don't see this. This is another, um, as you can see over here, this is an ERC-20. So it's actually another token. I, I'm actually not too familiar with the time token from the Alchemex project, actually. Um, if anybody knows any details about this, let me know. Um, yeah, I, I only know of the AlUSD token and of course ALCX, which is the Alchemex token. So time, I, I don't actually even see that on there. Thing. So I'm not too sure what this contract is for. Um, but if anybody has any more details, let me know. Um, the functions are also pretty sparse on this one. They're basically just implementing everything from Open Zeppelin with the only minter and mint. I'd be curious what this one is. Maybe maybe it's something they're doing this new. Oh, actually, um, let's see. Oh, actually, sorry. <laughs> I thought the time token was implemented seven days ago, so I thought it might be a new feature. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's the last commit was 26 days ago, so pretty while back um, since Alchemex is such a new project, right? And yeah, that's about it. Um, so I uh, hope this was useful for the code review. Um, if you want to check them out, you can just go to Alchemex and GitHub to see all the smart contract 